Mr. Jawa. Who? Are you a Jawa? Oh, you come to find things. Put them in your bag. Okay. You're going to rob us? You are? Okay. Should we be scared? Yes. Okay. All right. Bye bye, Mr. Jawa. Hi and welcome to the Rogue Tro Clone Trooper channel. Uh, my name is Daniel and as you can gather I'm making a Jawa costume. So I'm going to go through some of the details on the Jarrah costume that I'm making. Um, I'll put a link in the bio below on where I got the idea from. Uh, originally I'd watched a video made by a 501st member who was making Jarrah costumes for his kids and I realised, God this is super simple, I can do that for my kid. So I set myself a one day challenge. Um, now it did go into two days as most of these challenges do but mm, the major part of it was done one day um, and now I'm going to show you close up the different parts and I'll go through how I made it and what I made it made of okay right so this is most of it here all spread out okay actually not most of it, it is all of it spread out okay um, the first bit I'm going to talk about is the actual um, <sighs> robes cloak covering whatever you want to talk about it okay um, I used a hemp blanket um, to make the main part of the body of the costume. Um, I can get pretty easily here in Japan um, basically hemp hemp blankets in different colors. I was able to pick one up in dark chocolate brown. Cost me about the equivalent of nine euros, roughly. Um, say just about yeah, ten dollars, um, which was great because it's a full size blanket okay that gave me enough material to make um the whole main body part for my kid as well as the hood and i had scraps of material left over then to do the shoes which i'll talk about in a minute um, as you see me how i measured it out and i cut it up on my child um and then i uh, was able to cut out the hood and sewed it up the fabric inside the hood doesn't go all the way it actually just covers the main head part and that's made out of actually just normal cotton. It's black cotton swatches that you can buy here like for making uh, lining for inside bags or redoing pockets on, on trousers and stuff like that. That worked to put two of those which worked out great for either side of the hood. Um, one of the reasons why the hood is not completely covered uh, on the in lined on the inside and why I went for hemp is twofold. This costume is going to be worn by my son during a summer festival here in Japan where temperatures can go up to anywhere between 32 to 35 degrees um, with sweltering humidity and sun. And I don't want my kid passing out. So the hemp will breathe a lot, let the wind through and but keep him cool. And then I didn't do the full hood and left the back part of it so there is some airflow going through the back of the head as well. Okay. Um, Everything is just sewn up. I did cut off the sleeves then and let them, they will start to fray on their own, which will be nice. I'll give a nice part for the costume. Uh, as for the bottom, I didn't do that now uh, for safety reasons of my child. I don't want him tripping up and falling over. So I left those parts already turned up and sewn. Um, After I made sure it fitted in properly then I went out with a spray can of brown paint and I've put actually kind of brown 
dirtied up with brown pieces and I also then used um, shoe polish as well liquid shoe polish to give me some of the different variants uh, in browns and some bits of black as well on it to make it look like it's all dirty and worn and well done and that's done all over the hood as well um, and basically I just did this out of my balcony balcony is pretty dirty so it's kind of got a lot of natural stuff in there as well so that's the main part of the the costume the next part you see me building is the mask now the mask is just a halloween mask which i had bought there last year uh, he wore it and uh, we knew we were going to use it for this eventually um i covered the eyes with basically black tights okay um ladies tights pieces of swatches cut out and covering the eyes and glued on which meant then that you can see through it but on the other side they're pretty dark and you can't see out of them okay the next material i glued over that is black felt i might change this at some point because it might be a bit too heavy for him i would love to use some cotton um, t-shirt material but for now we've got some black felt it's extra piece at the top to hang over and basically enough piece at the bottom then to tuck into the shirt so it's not going to fall out and show his neck um, on the back pieces you can see i've put in some sponges to keep the eye pieces far away enough away from his eyes um, and also then i added an extra strap here to make it into a complete kind of like head harness so it's doesn't, not going to slide around on him too much and we can tighten it up um, the eyes they do look red when they're on and the reason for that is they're actually bicycle lights that I was able to get um, and one push turns them on, two pushes turns them into a strobe and three pushes turns them off again. Okay now I have actually I cut off the original red pieces and I put on these lenses which I did paint yellow so if he doesn't have them on it still looks like he has yellow eyes because um, you're not going to be able to see them that much um, during the parade in the, in the sunlight so having the yellow bits will just show up nicer um, but when he goes into darker places you will be able to see the light behind it okay so that's the basic mask part on his arms because uh, it's coming into summertime you can get these UV protection sleeves um, for women and uh, they have a, a thumb hole in them I can find where the thumb hole is now yeah it's there there's a thumb hole there so his thumb can go out and then over the top of that he's going to have these again these are the type of summer gloves that you can get here now i've had to cut these down and re-sew them to fit his small little child hands but that will keep his arms covered and that i'm going to jump up here to the belt the belt is just a cheap brown belt which i've dirtied up and the pouches are handmade inside this is eva foam cut into squares it's about actually two layers of it and then with leatherette just actually glued over and glued on the back as you can see and what i did do though is um i did actually stitch in the actual strap parts and did put stitching around these parts and before i glued them all down so it looks all prim and proper and as you can see they're well dirtied up the reason why they like this is because it wants to be slightly concaved to go around his chest so it doesn't start falling over the place and they are kind of glued into position there on the belt so it's not going to slide around as well okay um the other fine piece is this thing I wanted him to have a scavenger bag that he can put things into and uh, keep stuff with him and also be to bring water with him on the day as well. So I picked up a net bag um, at my local pound wise or dollar wise, whatever you want to call it, Yaku Yen store here. And I added on a canvas belt to go around the strap. Again, all this has been dyed with liquid brown shoe polish and some other black then shoe polish to dirty it up as well. Um, I find using the liquid shoe polish is a great idea. I picked it up that up off uh, another cosplayer um, there on YouTube and I use it greatly for dyeing things. Getting onto his shoes now. Um, I had enough fabric left over that I was able to make these wonderful shoes. So basically they are a pair of Crocs, cheap Crocs, okay, um, on the inside. And then because that's made out of foam as well, and um, they're lightweight, they're breathable, 
um, well, I say breedable because of this, the crocs they've hold so they can breed a little bit better and then I cover them in the fabric gluing it down and then I don't know if you can see it I've actually stitched some stitching in to make sure it's not going to fall apart on him um, wrapped it all up and I've made these leggings now a bit longer so they'll go up his legs and they're just going to be safety pinned in the place with baby pins baby nappy pins and um, that should hold it up onto his legs and even if they do fall down a bit they will still be fine um, so yeah and they've again been dirted up with some spray paint and some liquid shoe polish and that as well to give it that dirty grubby look okay and uh, yeah they should do them fine as well that's the shoes the first lot of shoes I did make I had to throw away because the size was too small for him um, and I decided to go for a bigger size so he has more comfort for walking okay so that's why they look a little bit different than the photograph I just shown you now getting on to the blaster okay the Gerald blaster is an iconic piece you see them zapping RTD2 and C3PO and then towing them away uh, basically uh, what it is made out of is EVA foam this is three layers of EVA foam stuck together and then with my Dremel I was able to then smooth down at the shape to get the shape of this basically what I did was I found a photograph online through the internet um, printed it off in an A3 size format which turned out for the exact size that I wanted cut out the image from the paper, I used that as my template and that's why I had a template of the dimensions and how I wanted it to look as well as the details that I wanted to put in. Okay, um, I didn't film any of that because there's lots of people online who do it. Okay, so basically template from the photograph, cut out the general shape, dremeled it out, made up the magazine, stuck that on. Um, Barrel part is an actual a piece of plastic piping and um, what I got from the hardware store and as you see in the photograph this is a drinks bottle can um, which is nice because it kind of gives it that strange bottom bit but we know it's not real okay but it gives it that lovely shape and a little weight um, using thinner foam then I was able to put these strappings on do it the trigger guard strap around the edges okay now it's not perfectly accurate but it will do a 10 year old boy for cosplay and as you can see I dremeled in some wood grain as well so if it catches in the light it does look like a piece of wood okay um, that was just spray painted up with um, some rattle can spray paint and then dry brushed on as well and then using a silver marker I then did the weathering on the metal and stuff right so there you have it i do apologize for the sound outside as i've said in my other videos every weekend during the summer the kids play baseball out in the park right beside where i live so there's nothing i can do about that so i do apologize if you like this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe follow me on facebook as well as instagram um, on both of those i will update the pages daily as i'm making something so if i have anything in the pipeline that i'm making pictures will go up straight away and i'm showing you what i'm doing as well if you are into cosplay and would like to cosplay in something Star Wars but don't know what group you want to get into, please check out the Imperial Outlanders. You can find them on Facebook as well. They are a carefree cosplay organisation that also does fundraising for different charities. We welcome all types of Star Wars characters, be it Rebels, um, right into Imperials and so on. It doesn't have to be a Star Wars character in general, as long as it's something from the Star Wars universe, they are quite happy to accept you so again check them out uh, again thanks for watching i hope this helps everyone and as always may the force be with you